I'm so excited to spend a bit of my morning with you here today at the incredible Mason Jar. This has been Royal Caribbean's most successful specialty launch ever. In fact, all the space that has been released pre-cruise is already sold out for the next several months. The reason this has been so successful, well, you're gonna see in just a few minutes, but it's the quality of the food, but it's also the inspiration of the menu, and who doesn't love brunch? It's my favorite meal of the day. Well, actually, I guess breakfast is one of my favorites too, and lunch, and dinner, and does Azumi before dinner count? All right, well, anyway, I'm really excited to dig into this incredible menu. Let's go. Greetings everyone, this is Danny from hardtravel.com, your Royal Caribbean cruise experts. And today I'm on board the incredible wonder of the seas. And I've got a treat for you. This is the Mason Jar. I think it's the most highly anticipated specialty restaurant ever from Royal Caribbean. And just speaking with the head of food and beverage, it's been the most successful launch that they've ever had. And for good reason. You're gonna see in just a minute the incredible brunch menu, but it's a lot more than that. You can have brunch here, of course, lunch and dinner. You're gonna to wanna to pre-book that as soon as you book your cruise, as those reservations open up, they're gonna get filled up because it's so incredibly popular. When you come inside the restaurant, you've got a beautiful bar. They're gonna have a low country music band that's gonna be playing each and every single evening, generally starting at about 8 p.m. And all of this comes together to complement some incredible Southern cooking. Growing up, I used to always love going to my grandma's house. I knew that I'd have, well, all of my favorites because it was my grandma, of course, but this is what it's meant to be. It's meant to be a place where you share with friends and family, you dig into some incredible food, and you just take that total cruise experience to another level. Now I'm gonna start with a little bit of Southern inspiration of a Mediterranean dish, if you will. What you're gonna have here is beautiful beef steak tomatoes. You've got the charred watermelon, which gives the name to the charred watermelon salad. Beautiful bits of feta cheese that I can't wait to dig into. You've got some onions around there, torn mint, and I think to top it off, what's really gonna make this exceptional is the jalapenos and the fried chicken skin. I like fried things, I like chicken skin, I like tomatoes, I like watermelon. I think you're gonna hear like quite a bit because, well, look at this menu. All right, let's dig into here. So I love that they've put a little bit of a char on there. I actually do this at home all the time on the barbecue, and this is one of my favorites that I make at home. So let's see how it measures up. Something tells me they know what they're doing here, maybe a little better than I do as a, as a home cook. All right, starting off, here we go. All right, let's dig in. A little bit of that feta. Let's get pina there. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Mmm, minty. Mmm. So I love that it's all those clean flavors. Of course, the jalapeno gives it that little bit of a zing. So you've got sweet, you've got savory, you've got fried. Sounds like Southern cooking to a tea. I think I'm gonna have to spend a little bit more time with this dish. Mm-hmm. Mm. Winner. Now, since we are at the Mason Jar restaurant, of course, you're gonna be drinking from, wait, what are these things called, Taylor? Oh yeah, sorry, but this is the Mason Jar. I totally forgot. There we go. So, a little bit of water to wet the whistle there. What we're gonna have up next is pimento cheese with saltines. Now, I mentioned that this does have a dinner menu as well. So this is gonna be a small plate at dinner, but they use it as one of the appetizers here. They also have jalapeno cornbread, but I'm gonna try this out. So they'll, they'll serve it with whipped butter, you know, you gotta whip it good, real, real good, and uh, dig right in. All right, so you've got the saltines, you've got the pimento, so this is sharp cheddar cheese, jalapenos, and happiness. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. It's good. So many times I've had it uh, pre-packaged and when it's made fresh and to order, like everything here at the Mason Jar, it really does stand out as exceptional. So you get that nice bite from the jalapenos. Of course you get, well, the happiness of cheddar cheese. And I think we got a good combination here. Mmm. Yep. Spicy goodness. All right, well, I think it's time to get a little bit devilish here and dig into these smoky deviled eggs. You've got capers, you've got peppers, you have that, that paprika that really gives it the smoky taste, and of course, that crispy chicken skin and some pickles. Now, my grandma always made us deviled eggs. It's one of my all-time favorites, so I gotta check this out and see how it compares. Yeah, I think we go for the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm like a good deviled egg should. You get several different flavor profiles in here. So of course, as soon as you bite in, you get that egg taste. 
but the pickles really give it that nice savory punch. Of course, the crispy chicken skin gives it the texture and a little bit of taste. But it's that paprika on top that's uh, you know classic with deviled eggs. Of course, my grandma put candied bacon. I you know this is pretty good. I got to say, grandma's recipe is in my heart as well too. But if you love deviled eggs, this is absolutely delicious. And what would a Southern meal be without some delicious deviled eggs? Now, I've been looking forward to seeing my friend Johnny for quite some time. As soon as I saw this menu, I knew that this was going to be a favorite, and it has been reaffirmed. This is by far the top requested and probably the, the favorite menu item so far for brunch. What you have here are blueberry Johnny cakes. It's that cornmeal pancake of sorts. You're gonna have the pulled pork on there, Texas style barbecue on top, more of that crispy chicken skin to give the texture, and then you've got a cool coleslaw on the side. So let's put this all together and see what it looks like. Because this has a lot of things that I like in one bite. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. You know what? I might just get a genie on my next cruise just for this because I could see having this every day in my, my cabin. Yeah, aqua theater suite, looking out at the ocean, Johnny cakes all day. Yeah, I could do that. I'm going for another one. Oh, there's a little bit of spice in there too. I love that they've they've taken that barbecue. It's sweet, but it's it's sweet and a little bit spicy. Kind of like changes on your tongue as you go through. Mm. Mm-hmm. Got a really big, savory, plump, juicy, happy, yummy blueberry. I love blueberries. All right, let's try this coleslaw. Mm-hmm. Really good. So. To me, coleslaw is all about texture. When you get it all soggy and whatnot, it's not my favorite. This has beautiful texture. You got those carrots are really nice and crisp. Of course, the cabbage is as well too. It's a, it's a little bit on the sweet side, but it does a great job complementing the spiciness of the Johnny cake. So let's do it. We don't have any more menu items, do we? All right, I'm gonna stick with this for a while. Next up is the salmon avocado toast. To me, nothing says Southern cuisine like salmon and avocado. Nah, just kidding, I'm from California. I think this is a little bit more of me, but what they've done is they've tweaked, tweaked it just a little bit with the jalapenos on top. You've got that fresh, thick cut sourdough bread that they just made back in the kitchen a few minutes ago. You've got the lime. Let's go ahead and zhuzh it up here just a little bit. Can't have enough accoutrements on your meal. Go. Oh, all right. You know what? I'm sure some people cut this up. I'm just going in. Ooh, jalapeno. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm, okay. I've eaten a lot of avocado toast. In fact, we have avocado trees all around where I live. This is pretty darn good. Got that smashed avocado, and it's really a different contrast with the smoked salmon. So it's a little bit of a take on um, bagels and lox maybe, but you put in the peppers, you put in the lime, and you really get that Southern taste. Mm -hmm. Now what you have here is a unique offering. It's the peanut buttery overnight oats. So you've got those hand rolled oats, along with that Greek yogurt that's kind of soaked overnight there. You've got Nutella on the top, you've got peanut butter, you've got banana, you've got bacon. I think it's a little bit of a throwback to, uh, to Elvis as well. I love bacon. I love candied bacon, I love bacon bacon, I love crispy bacon. I just like bacon, it's really one of my favorites. All right, let's dig in here. So I'm gonna kind of mix it all together here, just like you would do with the lime and the coconut upstairs. Mix it all around and uh, let's dig in. Mm. Okay. Hmm. Wow. This is, uh, you know, they have a portion of the menu that's called something sweet. And of course, this is part of it. You add a little bit of that bacon in, you get the savory. Of course, the banana is sweet. The Nutella really complements the peanut butter. I mean, peanut butter and Nutella, need I say more? Let's get a little bit more because the oats being that they're soaked overnight with the yogurt, they really are a completely different texture. So when you add the bacon, and there's no better way to do it than just to break it off, you add the oats, you add the banana, you add the Nutella. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, it's something sweet. Now, one of the things that you're gonna hear a lot around the mason jar is the word y'all, because that's what this is all about. It's bringing all of y'all's friends together to enjoy an incredible meal. And for me personally, there is nothing better than biscuits and gravy. Now, once again, I always go back to my grandma's recipe because, well, she was an incredible chef, but this looks to be exquisite. So what you have here is a Southern biscuit on the bottom. Now you've got to get that exactly right. There's biscuits and then there's some biscuits. And this looks to be one of those biscuits. I'll show you that in just a second here. But the way they prepare it is they've got the bacon onion jam. You had me at bacon and then you put sausage on top. You've got that beautiful cheddar cheese. And then on the very top, you're gonna have eggs made to order. And for me, 
This is all about those textures and the flavors mixing, so you gotta have some yolk in there. I had sunny side up. You can have over easy, over medium, scrambled if you really want, but this is the way to go. On the side, you're also gonna have some homemade sausage gravy, so this is their take on biscuits and gravy, and, well, just a little bit of happiness. So let's dig in there, see that melt down. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Whoops, fell apart. So, well, that, that, first off, that's the definition of a good biscuit, I'll just say that. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. So immediately, actually the first taste I got was that bacon onion jam. Flavors that just go together absolutely perfectly. And then you get the savoriness of the sausage, of course, but the biscuit is really well prepared. It kind of, it, it's soft and, and just a little bit crumbly and chewy at the same time. I don't, I don't know if that's even a thing, but what they've done is they've taken that biscuit and the right texture, because when you put all these things on top of it, it's really easy for it just to kind of go apart. That's not what we have here. We have absolute deliciousness. Let me get a little bit of this gravy on here, turn it into a biscuits and gravy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. No yolk, this is my favorite thing so far. I'm gonna have a few more bites. The crunchiness actually on the on the outside, so I'd, I'd start on the, like the inside of the biscuit. On the outside, you have a little bit of that crunchiness. It's not burned whatsoever, but you have that crunchiness on the bottom. And so there's four or five different textures that just come together here absolutely stunningly. Yep, I like Southern food. Mm. Chef, thank you, I'll have five more. Next up is the Southern breakfast. It also puts together several things that I love. You got Mima's biscuit right here. Once again, this is perfect. I'm just gonna show you what I'm talking about here. It pulls right apart. You've got that texture on the outside, beautiful soft on the inside. Mmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Little bit of whipped butter, so incredibly good. So you've got the biscuit, you got the gravy. So you can make your own biscuits and gravy if you'd like. And what you have on the other side, uh, is a, a, a bed of sweet potato hash underneath, which is one of my favorites anyways. Eggs made to order. Once again, I'm always gonna get sunny side up. You gotta put those yolks in there all the way through and crispy bacon. But this is the real, the real test here. If they're gonna claim that this is crispy bacon, it better be crispy bacon. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Crispy bacon. All right, let's dig into this. So we've got the eggs right here. Okay, we gotta mix that together with the hash. Oh yeah, look at those peppers and corn in the hash and the sweet potatoes. I'm gonna take that here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna load some of this up on the biscuit. Mm-hmm, yep. Take a little bit of this crispy bacon, a little of the sausage gravy. All right, gotta mix and match, mix it all together. Mm hmm That's what it's all about, folks. I gotta talk to Mima in just a bit because, well, I'm not sure my wife has this biscuit recipe. But I gotta say, we were in the South recently and we got to do this incredible paddle wheel cruise. We went and made biscuits with the one and only Regina Charbonneau. And uh, I love Regina and I love her biscuits, but Mima may, may be coming up on you, Regina. This is pretty darn incredible. So once again, you've got your own biscuits and gravy if you wanna make it that way. The hash is absolutely delicious. Mm. Put in a bit of that, that runny egg yolk there and mm -hmm. oh yeah, I'll be back. Now I love an omelet and I almost always start my day on a cruise ship with a spinach omelet. It's one of my favorites, but what they've done here is once again, they've taken it to another level. So you have that beautiful French technique that you can see. The omelet is a three egg whipped omelet and in the middle, you have some of that incredible smoky pimento cheese. So you've got the peppers, you've got that cri that fresh, sharp cheddar cheese as well, and then spinach and onions. And then on the outside here, you're gonna have country style potatoes and a beautiful grilled green tomato. I have recently come to fall in love with green tomatoes. Of course, everybody knows about fried green tomatoes, but grilled green tomatoes are great because they really bring out the different acidity from the tomato, a little bit of sweetness. Let's put this together with the spice of the pimento and let's try it. All right, so that's, talk about ooey gooey. I just gotta show you guys that, look at that. Gooey happiness right there. Pimento, there's nothing not to like about pimento cheese. All right, let's dig in. So we've got a little bit of the omelet, got a lot bit of the pimento, the green tomato. Mmm. Oh yeah, 
So the tomato really gives that, that touch of acidity. Of course, the pimento gives the spice. The, the omelet itself is excellently prepared. There's two ways to make an omelet, the right way and every other way. And of course, Chef Daniel really knows what he's doing here. I'm gonna get a little bit more of the tomato because I, I love the idea and the taste of that added texture in there because so much of eating, of course, it's the smell, it's the taste, but a lot of it is the textures as well too because it all blends together for the overall experience. So let's dig back in one more. And I love potatoes, don't get me wrong, but they're a little bit of filler, just saying. It's a potato. Yeah, this is what it's all about. That homemade pimento cheese, you really have to get the right sharp cheddar. So this is an extra sharp cheddar and uh, well, it's extra good. Now this is also a menu item that I was incredibly intrigued about and excited for. This is a uh, stuffed French toast. I'm gonna call it the Elvis stuffed French toast. My grandpa's favorite sandwich was peanut butter, honey, bananas. That, that was his all time favorite. Of course, growing up, I ate a lot of that as well. And there's a lot of inspiration from that here because that was of course Elvis's favorite as well. So inside you're gonna have creamy peanut butter and you're gonna have bananas. Now here on the outside, you got a little bit of the creamy peanut butter, the bananas, you've got some delicious glaze on top there, but this is what it's all about, the candied bacon. Mm. Mm hmm I'm gonna start with that there. Okay, all right, so of course, I'm gonna take the syrup, I'm gonna do a little bit of a pour over here. So get that pinky up for the pour over, right? There we go. And I am going to cut into this. Let's see what this is all about. Oh yeah. All right, so I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but inside there you've got that, oh, that looks so good. The banana, the peanut butter, I'm just going at it. I can't wait any longer. All right, let's do this thing. And uh, just by the way, if anybody is ever looking for a gift for me, candied bacon's a pretty good place to start. Just saying. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So of course, Peanut butter takes a little bit longer to, to utilize there, but my daughter and I both love peanut butter for great reason, right? I mean, it's got the incredible flavors in there. It's a really good brioche style French toast. It's perfectly prepared and that banana with the sweetness, of course the bacon with the savoriness was sweet on top and then peanut butter, which is well sweet and savory in and of itself. It's a really phenomenal combination. You put a little bit of syrup right here on top and uh, well, I can't let this candied bacon go to waste there. Mm. Yep. Winner, winner, peanut butter dinner. Mm -hmm. Now keep in mind, as I mentioned, this is brunch. So of course you're gonna have all kinds of breakfast foods. You're gonna have some lunch foods, some dinner foods. They're gonna put it all together like shamalama, ding dong, babidi bop, shabop. Let's do this thing. So this is the burger. So I've got to clear a little bit of space here. You've got that more of that beautiful crispy bacon. You've got some chicken skin there. You've got cheddar cheese. It's a quarter pound Angus patty. A little bit of lettuce on there and some spicy romalade. Let's go. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. Oh yeah. Forgot to mention there's a little bit of barbecue in there too. All of these come together for just a really fantastic burger. In fact, I love Johnny Rockets. This may be the best burger here on board. You've got that extra crispy bacon, which really makes all the difference in the world, along with the crispy chicken skin. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So there's that crispy chicken skin. Gives you that excellent texture. There's some pickles on the bottom. Putting it all together, there's a ton of sweet, savory, pretty good amount of acid in here as well. We know that that goes together, a little bit of salt to make the perfect dish. Yep. Mm. Mm, burger. Now this can come with an assortment of side dishes. Today we have fries. I'm gonna save those for Taylor and the crew because as much as I love them, they're really just filler. Now we're gonna dig into a classic dish. This is Mima's fried chicken and waffles. It's the signature dish here at the Mason Jar. And growing up in Los Angeles or near Los Angeles, we spent a bit of time at Roscoe's and they of course put this really on the map. And uh, I, I gotta see, Mima tells me that this is uh, better. So let, let's see what we've got here, Mima. You've got the buttermilk biscuit down below, the beautifully fried chicken. You're gonna have maple syrup and some hot honey. So actually, before we do that, I'm gonna go this route. I'm gonna put some honey on this bad boy. Go, and we're gonna put a little maple syrup as well per the chef, there we go. All right, so now we've got that sweet to add to the savory and let's dig in. Now fried chicken, you can tell just about immediately if it's gonna be good or not. And as I cut through this, 
It is absolutely super nice and moist in the middle, which is exactly what you're looking for. Not the easiest thing to do with the chicken breast, of course. So <clears throat> you've got beautiful, nice, moist chicken. You've got the waffle, but the waffle's gotta be good too. So let's see what this is all about. All right. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yep. No disappointment here. Didn't wanna let that one go. I don't know if you guys could hear that, <clears throat> but that extra crunch on the outside, it's extra crispy. Really good fried chicken is exactly what this is. Crispy on the outside, super moist and delicious on the inside. And of course, you know, butter, buttermilk uh, biscuit or waffle is always gonna be a good thing. That's one more here. I don't know if you guys can get an up close look at that, but look at that chicken. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. No, eh, 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 not for you, it's for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now you guys know that Popeyes and McDonald's and all these companies are at chicken sandwich war right now, but uh, I'm not sure that they can uh, mess with this crispy chicken sandwich at all. You've got more of that beautiful buttermilk brine and fried chicken. Underneath you've got pickles, tomatoes, a little bit of that spicy romalade, a little bit of sweet, a little bit of savory. Of course you got some potatoes as well, but I think it might be time for a drink. What do you think, Shadi? Oh, uh, well. Oh, oh, so nice that you think of me that way, a Southern Belle, I love that. I've been working my entire life to be a debutante. So there we go, but anyway, so what you have here is, uh, well, nothing says brunch like bourbon to me. So you've got muddled Buffalo Trace bourbon, one of my all time favorites with blueberries in there. You've got mint, you've got a little bit of happiness. I'm just gonna go ahead and start with this actually. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, things are about to get interesting, ladies and gentlemen. I have to eat too? Oh, all right. Mmm. Absolutely delicious. What I love is they've taken mixology and they've paired it up with the menu as well. There's quite a few different unique drinks that you can only find in the mason jar. I think they may spread throughout the fleet. In fact, I'm 100% sure the mason jar will be found elsewhere on Royal Caribbean soon because it's already been an enormous hit. So let's get the filler out of the way. Don't worry, I'll be back for you french fries. And we've got that beautiful chicken sandwich. Now keep in mind, depending on how you prefer it, you can get the Nashville hot version or you can get just a regular crispy chicken sandwich. So let's dig in just a bit. Mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Popeyes. You lose. Mm hmm Oh yeah. Buffalo Trace. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, you can shave the shot for later. Now, nothing says Southern quite like a po' boy. What you have here is a beautiful shrimp po' boy. So you've got the, the shrimp and the remoulade on top, fresh tomatoes, you've got a bed of lettuce underneath, and that bread is really a huge part of it as well too. Once again, I'm gonna set the filler aside for just a minute here, and I'm gonna dig in. In fact, the last time I was in New Orleans, I had more than my fair share of po' boys, and some of them look just like this. Mm. Mm-hmm. One of the things I've learned is you're probably gonna have to order a couple extra napkins. Mm-hmm. Yep. Excellent. So getting this right is all about the texture of the shrimp. Of course, beautiful Gulf shrimp there. So you've got the shrimp, it's lightly breaded. You get that texture with the tomatoes and the acidity that that brings. A little bit of sweetness and spiciness from the remoulade as well. And uh, the hoagie is absolutely delicious. I'm gonna have it just a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had to bring a little seafood into it, why not? So in addition to the shrimp po' boy, they also have a classic oyster po' boy, and I wanted to point out that you can get the southern hash, so you can get a sweet potato hash, you can get fries, or you can get tots as well. So lots of great options here. I'm gonna give this a taste as well because that shrimp one was so delicious. Let's see what this is all about. Mmm. So, Obviously oysters give it a little bit more of that seafood flavor. I love the shrimp, I love this. If you are more into that deep seafood flavor, this is gonna be the one for you. Mm. Mm. Oh, my bad, let's dig in here. All right, next up are the red velvet pancakes. I've actually never made these. I've made red velvet cake with my daughter at home because she loves the idea that it's red and you didn't put any red food coloring in there. Look it up, of course it's that uh, chemical reaction there. What you have is these extra fluffy high stack pancakes 
a cream cheese sauce on top that, well, let's go. I, oh, I see a little powdered sugar in there, a little bit of strawberry. Let's dig in. Mm-hmm. Nah, just kidding. I better just go with a tiny bite. All right, go here. A little extra cream cheese happiness. Oh yeah, that's a bit sinful. It's dessert for breakfast, but it's actually, it's not overly sweet. It, it's that the creaminess of the cream cheese, it kind of takes it down just a notch. So you've got sweet, you've got a little bit of the savory in there and just a lot of happiness. Hmm, and guess what I didn't know before? Red velvet pancakes go really well with Buffalo Trace. This Southern Belle loves it. Ooh, strawberry. Now I absolutely love a cinnamon roll and this is exquisite. What you're gonna have here is the sweet tooth cinnamon roll. You've got candied pecans on top there. You've got delicious cinnamon roll, nicheslessness. And of course, on the very top, an incredible amount of glaze. And in fact, I think it might be time for another drink. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so what do we have here? We have our PB and J Old Fashioned. PB and J Old Fashioned. Now save that for me. I'll be right back for it in just a minute. This is a treat. In fact, it's actually the signature cocktail here at the Mason Jar. What you're gonna find is a little bit of screwball, peanut butter whiskey, some Kentucky bourbon. In fact, when he was talking about the drink, I thought, hey, stop it, Taylor. It's not yours, this is mine. You can have one of the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You want that? No? Okay, yeah, you can't have that either. All right, so anyways, you've got a beautiful drink here. I've never had an old fashioned with peanut butter in it. I've definitely never had an old fashioned with with uh, jelly in there, you've got both in there. So I think even before I go into that, I'm gonna try it. So what do you think? A little bit of, little bit of peanut butter and jelly first. Oh yeah. Mm. I'd love to see the little elves that made those tiny sandwiches. Mm. Oh wow. Wow, that is incredibly smooth. That's dangerously smooth. That is really good. All right, got one more. So you can get just a little bit of a hint of the peanut butter in there. You can actually taste a little bit of the jelly and of course, bourbon, whiskey, need I say more? All right, let's dig back into this cinnamon roll here and I'll be right back for you. All right. So my grandma always made cinnamon rolls. Every time we went over to her house, she would always make us cinnamon rolls. And my favorite bits were actually the leftovers. She would take the leftover bits, roll them up, put a little bit of cinnamon and sugar on top. And then of course we'd get to eat those as soon as they came out of the oven before the well, cinnamon rolls do. So but let's see what this is like. Got a high bar here for cinnamon rolls. Okay. So it meets the ooey gooey check because it wouldn't really be a cinnamon roll if it wasn't ooey gooey in the middle. They say generously glazed. That's always my complaint is there's not enough glaze. There's plenty here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Absolutely delicious. Mm. Give me just a second. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. you're pretty. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna finish this off here in just a minute, but I really can't believe how incredibly delectable this is. And a lot of these style drinks don't necessarily go with sweets. You don't think about that part pairing well with a uh, cinnamon roll, but it really, really does. You know what it also pairs really well with? Me. I don't know about you guys, but I am full, and I'm much more full than just with food. I'm full of happiness for this incredible restaurant and the overall experience. To me, cruising is much more than just food and entertainment and the swimming pool and the destinations that you visit. It's the people that you meet and you get to interact with. So this is truly about Southern Comfort Food, which is all about bringing friends and family together to share a table. And I've had an incredible time here. Of course, the drinks have helped quite a bit. But once again, I mentioned that it's all about the people. I wanted to bring in a couple really special people here for just a minute, just to talk about the Royal Caribbean experience. Come on in, Auntie Jan and Shetty. So these, uh, these two incredible people were our, our waiters and waitress today. And more than that, they've already become family because we're here at the Mason Jar, brand new concept that is absolutely spectacular. Chef Daniel whipped up some incredible food. These two incredible people have become part of my life as well. I've met so many amazing people along the way cruising over my 160 cruises. But once again, it's really all about the people and about sharing the fun. So I'm gonna get them a drink here in just a minute as soon as the shift's over. What do you think, peanut, peanut butter and jelly? Yeah, he was the one that called me a screwball. Oh no, he was the one that told me it was screwball whiskey. So anyway, but thank you guys so much for joining us here today. Of course, when you're ready to book your next Royal Caribbean cruise, make sure you reach out to Hard Travel. Our advisors would love to guide you through the process so you, your friends and family can sit right here at the Mason Jar, have an incredible meal and make your hearts as full as mine.